All right, let's look at some old sketches from my visual diary. This is one of the first sketchbooks that I used to get myself back into a regular drawing routine. Drawing has always been a hobby of mine from a very early age, before I even learned how to read and write. I just took a long hiatus from it when I first started work. So in 2015, I started to prepare myself, to prepare all the tools that I needed to get back at it. It was also the time when I had a customized drawing table set up in my room, so that gave me all the tools that I needed to not have a reason to not draw. But whilst I had all the tools and equipment ready, the next thing that I needed was purpose. And so that's how I thought of this on the sketch routine wherein I get to summarize what happened to me during the week, like a highlight of my week, whether it's a good event or a bizarre one. If I could translate that into a visual metaphor, then I would attempt to create a sketch of it. So that was enough to fuel me to draw something. At the same time, it pushed me to practice that visual storytelling skill because I could easily tell you what happened to me during the week in words. But if I try to translate that into something visual, then it's a lot more fun. And it's no fun if it's too easy. <laughs> and so when I figured that formula for myself to always have a reason to draw something, anything, I first set the bar really low to just one panel sketch per week, but that quickly ramped up to several sketches per week because I quickly realized that one panel sketch is not enough to convey the story <laughs> or the slice of life story that I wanted to communicate. And so I ended up with several sketches, which is just as well because I needed the mileage anyway. And so I just kept drawing. And so it's quite amusing looking at my old sketches now. And uh, there's a recurring character there, a cat avatar character. <laughs> but there's also a little kitty character that shows up quite often in it. And I just like to share a little story behind uh, some of them. Now, I was using this sketchbook in, in simultaneously with that other sketchbook to lay down my thumbnails and also the tonal value sketches to help me plan out my paintings. And there's also the sketchbook that I used to lay down the thumbnails for my first short story comic book, Mumbles Jumbo, as well as Not in Sleep. But before I even started laying down the thumbnails for Not in Sleep, uh, there's a part in my sketchbook where I have this sketch here. This is when I had my niece at my place, and so I lent her this sketchbook to doodle on while I was drawing elsewhere, and this was the time when I just finished writing the story of Not in Sleep. And I was still figuring out the character design. So I didn't have any thumbnails. I couldn't really show her the story as much as I wanted to. So I just ended up telling her the story verbally, like you would a child telling a bedtime story. And I remember when I got to the part where Nod was out in the city. You see, Nod lives in a world where everyone's circadian rhythm is in sync, so everybody goes to bed at the same time. But for some reason, he's able to stay up much later than everyone else, and so he ends up exploring outside his town and onto the city on his bicycle, and he finds out that the city is in disarray, and so he tries to tidy things up. And once he was done tidying things up, he decided to treat himself with a lolly. So he got... Um, piece of bubblegum from this dispenser and uh, that was the moment where he encountered this shadow that was talking to him but he could not find the thing that was casting the shadow and when I described this to my niece like, without any drawings she was uh, taken aback and said that's scary <laughs> it's not meant to be a scary story but that made me realize oh yeah <laughs> It is kind of creepy when you come to think about it. And so whilst I had her at my place at the time, I was telling her about the different characters as I was uh, uh, coming up with their character designs. So this is my initial designs of Nod, the Shadow, 
Nod's little brother and uh, the father, the mother. Now, at the time, at that point in time, I didn't know what sleep looked like yet. It was a blank slate in my head. Like, I had no idea at all. When I wrote the story, I, I just couldn't imagine her and what she would look like. So I just threw that out to my knees and I asked her, what do you think sleep looks like now that you know the story? If you imagine her as, a, as an animal, what would she be? Because not as part kid, like a little goat. That's why he has a pair of horns and a little goatee. So I asked her, what what's the first thing that comes to mind and she said perhaps she's a deer <laughs> and so that's why sleep ended up a little doe <laughs> and so that's a little story behind that sketch there's a few more sketches here but i'll save that for next time